and welcome to our very first video at Expedition Theme Park. We're going to be taking a walking expedition through the history of some of the world's most famous theme parks and attractions. Our first expedition is going to be starting at Disney's Epcot. Full length of the property. The most exciting, the far the most important part of our Florida project. In fact, the heart of everything we'll be doing in Disney World will be our experimental prototype city of tomorrow. We call it Epcot. So let's take our first steps on our expedition through the history of Epcot. Epcot opened on October the 1st, 1982, as the second of the current four parks at Walt Disney World. Based on the unrealized concept of a utopian city of the future, developed and announced by Walt Disney himself. Epcot was dedicated to the celebration of human achievement, and is often referred to as the Permanent World's Fair. The park is divided into two sections, Future World and World Showcase, and we'll begin in our expedition through the entrance into Future World. The original plans for the park showed indecision over the park's purpose. Some Imagineers wanted it to represent the cutting edge of technology, while others wanted it to showcase the international cultures and customs from around the world. At one point, a model of the futuristic part was pushed together against a model of the World's Fair international theme, and the two are combined into what we know as Epcot today. The park was originally named Epcot Center to reflect the ideals and values of the city Walt had first envisioned. It was constructed for an estimated $800 million to $1.4 billion and took three years to build, at the time the largest construction project on Earth. Opening in October 1982, as part of the opening day ceremony, dancers and band members performed We've Just Begun to Dream. The Sherman Brothers also wrote a song especially for the occasion entitled The World Showcase March. During the final, doves and many sets of balloons were released into the park. Different performing groups representing countries from all over the world performed in World Showcase. Water was gathered from major rivers across the globe and emptied into the park's Fountain of Nations ceremonial containers to mark the opening. Cast members on opening day received a coin displaying Spaceship Earth and the text, The Dawn of a New Disney Era. This is a very special project for our company and one we're very proud of and one that I think is going to develop tremendous word of mouth because it's an exciting show. While October 1st was considered a soft opening only, Spaceship Earth was dedicated that day. Now as you will soon see, Spaceship Earth's theme is communications, civilization and communications from Stone Age to Information Age. On October 24th, 1982, Disney Chairman and CEO E. Carden Walker's official dedication of the park happened, which can be found at the entrance on a plaque today. Epcot Center are quite clear. We want to first entertain, then inform and inspire all who come here, and above all, to instill in our guests a new sense of belief and pride in mankind's ability to shape a world that offers real hope to people everywhere in the world. As we walk from the entrance, it's impossible not to see the giant sphere above that serves as the icon structure of Epcot, and it's here we visit our first stop on our expedition through the park. Spaceship Earth was designed with the help of science fiction writer Ray Bradbury, who also helped with the first storyline for the attraction. Construction took 26 months, or just over two years. The structure is similar to the United States Pavilion from the Expo 67 World Fair in Montreal. Unlike that structure though, Spaceship Earth is a complete sphere supported by three pairs of legs. Spaceship Earth is in fact two structural domes inside of each other, with a two feet gap between each sphere to allow for maintenance. The cladding was designed so that when it rains, no water pours off the side onto the guests below. The water is collected through one inch gaps into a gutter system which is then channeled into the World Showcase Lagoon. In October 1982, the attraction began as ride vehicles moved up into the structure through a lighted tunnel enhanced by a fog machine. The original version of the Omni Nuva ride was narrated by Lawrence Dobkin from October 1st, 1982 until May 25th, 1986. The theme of communication throughout the ages is presented in chronological order with the use of audio animatronic figures. Some of these scenes include actors seen in a Greek theater, charioteers carrying messages from a Roman court, a monk falls asleep on a manuscript he is still inscribing, Michelangelo paints the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel, and Gutenberg mans his printing press, and these scenes can still be seen in the current version today. 
Moving on, the next scene suggests a 20th century technology rush. These scenes meld together, overlapping as the newsboy hawks papers, a movie and film can be seen showing motion pictures as well as representations of radio and video. As the ride vehicles reach the large space at the top of the sphere, the ceiling shows projections of the stars, planets, Milky Way, and even Spaceship Earth. Ride vehicles then revolve 180 degrees as passengers lay backwards facing the sky on a descent back down through the sphere. From 1982 to 1984, the ride was sponsored by Bell Systems, which changed to AT&T from 1984 to 2004. In 1986, the first remodel occurred. The second version of the attraction started off with a lighted entrance tunnel enhanced by twinkling lights to show stars and the fog machine was removed. News journalist Walter Cronkite was the new narrator, reading from an updated script. And now, your host, Walter Cronkite. For eons, our planet has drifted as a spaceship through the universe. The final was also changed, with a new song called Tomorrow's Child added and projected images of children on screens to help fit the new ending's theme. Tomorrow's Child On October 15th, 1994, the attraction was closed to receive a major remodel. The third version of the attraction kept most of the beginning and middle of the attraction the same, but three scenes were removed towards the end of the attraction. These scenes showed a computer in a boy's bedroom of the 1980s, a woman's office of the 1980s, and a network operation center of the 1990s. These scenes were replaced just by one scene showing a boy and a girl using the internet to communicate between America and Asia. The new version of the attraction was narrated by actor Jeremy Irons, also known as Scar from the Lion King, which was also released in late 1994. Well, I shall never be king. <laughs> Spaceship Earth glows with billions of interactions, carrying news and information at the very speed of light. A new musical score was also added to the ride. The ending was also completely redone, with the removal of the space station scene located in the attraction's planetarium, as well as the replacement of the projections of Earth. Fun fact, the astronauts using this scene turned up in the Space Mountain post-show until 2009. In celebration of the year 2000, a large 25-story magic wand held by Mickey Mouse's hand was built next to Spaceship Earth. At the top of the large wand was the number 2000. After the Millennium celebration ended, the structure was left standing but in 2001, the number 2000 was replaced by the word Epcot. Many guests did not like this addition to the Epcot icon, and in 2007, the Epcot vice president announced that Spaceship Earth would be restored to its original appearance, and the one structure would be removed by the park's 25th anniversary. Siemens, the new sponsor of Spaceship Earth, was rumored to have requested the one removed as it did not fit their corporate image. The ride closed on July 9th, 2007, and by October 1st, the wand had been removed. Components of the structure were later auctioned on eBay. This closure also saw the ride's fourth update, which included new scenes and updates to the old scenes, new costumes, lighting, and props, a new score by Bruce Borton, and a new narration was again added by Judy Dench, the future, one day at a time. and an all-new interactive ending. The new scene showed a Greek classroom, mainframe computers, and the creation of the personal computer. With this new interactive screen, riders can choose their own future while the ride returns to the loading station. At the beginning of the ride, the guest's picture is taken, and the guest's face is then used on an animated character narrated by Cam Clark. In October 2017, Siemens ended their sponsorship of the attraction. A VIP lounge operated by the current sponsor has been used above the post-show area of Spaceship Earth, and guests of the sponsor's company can relax in the lounge while visiting the park. While the ride was unsponsored between 2004 to 2005, the area was used for private events, and is likely to be used again in this manner now. Many Disney Park icons throughout the world use projection mapping as nighttime events. While projection mapping on Disney's icons has been added to all three of the other parks at Walt Disney World, Spaceship Earth has used very little of this technology. A one-off event in 2016 for the opening of Rogue One saw Spaceship Earth turn into the Death Star. The only other time it was used was for a special event when Monsters University was released. The blank canvas of Spaceship Earth has yet to be turned into a projection map attraction, which is strange because Spaceship Earth seems like the perfect space to use this technology. What does the future bring for Spaceship Earth in 2017? Well, Disney's concept art for Epcot released at the D23 Expo shows little change for the outside of the attraction, but inside, the future awaits. 
And there you have it guys, our very first attraction on Expedition Epcot. As we continue our walk through the park's history, we will visit attractions from the past, present and future. Next up, we're heading over to an attraction in Future World East, so be sure to check back soon for our continued trip on our Expedition Epcot.